All right, so unit exam review here for the physics unit for unit three. All right, we started off this unit and we were talking about the forms and types of energy. Okay, so there could be, you know, a few multiple choice questions about forms and types of energy, you know, like, you know, electrical energy or magnetic or, you know, gravitation, whatever. Okay, we went over those kind of the first day. Okay, so types of energy and forms, that'll be multiple choice. There'll also be probably multiple choice questions about the three kinds of systems that we covered there. That would be open, closed, and isolated systems. Okay, remembering that in an open system, we exchange matter and energy. So a campfire would be an open system, okay? A closed system exchanges energy, but not matter. So it's like an airtight container. No matter can get out, but energy can flow back and forth. So like when you throw something in the freezer inside a Ziploc bag, okay? And an isolated system is um, one in which we have no matter and no energy being exchanged at all. Okay, so it's kind of an imaginary system. It's really hard to actually build one like that. All right, so you could have a multiple choice question that describes something, and then you're asked, is that an open system, an isolated system, or a closed system? Okay, that kind of thing. Okay, um, then we talked about thermodynamics, okay, and we talked about heat engines, okay, and heat pumps. Right, so a heat engine is one that utilizes that energy wants to flow from a hot area to a cold area. If we can put something in the middle where the energy is flowing, then that energy can be harnessed to do useful work, turn a turbine or something like that. Okay, that's a heat engine. Okay, the diagram that you guys had in your notes package was of this boat with two pipes. One really, really long pipe that went down to the cold water and one really short pipe that was near the surface where the water was supposedly warmer and that that could power the engine on the boat. Okay, we said, yeah, theoretically that's real nice, but how do you sail around with a 100 meter long pipe dangling from the bottom of your boat? Okay. Not really practical, but you know, in theory, it would work. All right, uh, heat pumps like your refrigerator or an air conditioner. Okay, they're kind of going against the second law of thermodynamics, which says that energy flows from hot to cold. Okay, well, they're pumping heat into the hotter area. In order to do that, we have to use. It's like trying to pump water uphill. It's going to require work. Yeah, it's going to require energy. Okay. It's not naturally going to go that way. I'm forcing it to go that way. So I have to put energy in. Okay. Guys, if you have air conditioning in your house in the summertime, your air conditioner is probably the largest consumer of electricity in your house. Okay. Um, your refrigerator would normally be that. Okay. But in the summer, your air conditioner is chilling the entire volume of air of your whole house. Okay. That's a lot more than the refrigerator is doing. Okay. It's like 32 cubic feet or whatever. Okay, it's a lot less than what your uh, air conditioner has to do. So they use a lot of electricity. And in some areas in the summertime, they cause brownouts. That is, they overdraw the power grid and like transformers blow out and people's power goes out. Okay, so yeah, um, you have to watch out for that. So um, we don't usually have that problem too much. Okay, uh, perpetual motion machines, I would say kind of have an understanding as to why they can't exist. Okay, has to do with the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, energy is always flowing from a high energy system to a low energy system. Okay, and a perpetual motion machine would have to be in an isolated system because it would make noise and it would there would be forms of energy that would represent energy lost. And as soon as it lost energy, it would stop. Okay, because you're not putting any energy into a perpetual motion machine, right? Even if you could make one that worked, what would it not do? So a perpetual motion machine just runs and runs and runs and runs, okay? It actually conserves all of its energy. But if I hooked it up to anything, what would happen? Hmm? It would die. Yep, it would stop. Because if I wanted to make it do any work, it would transfer energy away and stop, okay? I can't get something for nothing, right? And a perpetual motion machine, if you're using it to power something, you are, you're creating energy. And that's a violation of the first law of thermodynamics that says energy can't be created or destroyed. Okay, everybody with me there? So laws of, thermo laws of thermodynamics, also important, okay? Gotta know what those are. 
Okay, scalar and vector quantities. We got to know those, right? Not because I'm going to have you know a, a multiple choice question that says uh, which of the following are scalar quantities. Uh, although I might do that, but it's not likely. Okay. You need to know these because if in the written response I ask you to calculate velocity, you need to remember that's a vector quantity because you calculate it differently than you do speed, which is a scalar quantity. Right? You need to remember which ones need to have a direction put on their answer. Okay? So that's why we need to know which ones are which. Right? So the quantities we've gone over in this unit that are scalar, speed, distance, time, and energy. Okay? The vector quantities we've gone over are velocity, displacement, acceleration, and force. Okay? They are vector quantities. There's, yes, they are vector quantities. Sorry. Got confused there. Vector. Velocity is displacement over time. This one has direction. This one doesn't. Okay, so if I say I'm going 100 kilometers per hour, I've given you speed. If I say I'm going 100 kilometers per hour north, I've given you velocity. Yeah, one has direction, the other doesn't. But we solve for them differently, right? Speed is distance over time. Velocity is displacement over time. So we have to remember, we calculate those a little differently, and it's important to remember that that's true. Okay. All right, so simple calculations you might be asked to do on the test. Speed is distance over time. Okay, so that would be our first one here. Speed's distance over time. Or velocity is displacement over time. Okay, there could be some simple calculations like that in maybe the multiple choice. Okay, I'm probably not going to burn a five mark written response question on V equals D over T, right? It's too easy for that. Right. How do we calculate displacement? What's the other way, especially if it's on a graph? Nope. Well, on a velocity versus time graph, yes, it is. I was thinking simpler than that. Without manipulating that, you're right. Yeah, I could manipulate this on a on a position versus time graph, how would I calculate displacement? I would subtract two things. Right, final position minus initial position. Remember, displacement is the change in position. That is on your formula sheet, okay? It is something we need to remember because it'll be important on graphing questions. Okay, everybody good with that? All right, so expect, you know, you probably get a couple of these, okay, in the, maybe in the multiple choice. So have a look over that first set of, like, worksheet questions that we had. Okay, those are pretty good examples of the kind of thing I might ask. Okay, and then we went into graphing. And guys, honestly, if there's one thing that's counting for a huge amount of marks on this test, it is that. Okay, there's a lot of graphing stuff on this test. There's a position versus time graph question in the written response. There's a velocity versus time graph question in the written response. And there are several graphs in the multiple choice as well. Okay. You could be asked to do any number of things with the graphing questions. It could be simple stuff like, here's a graph. Tell me what's going on in section B or describe the motion of the object on this graph, right? And you'd have to look at it and go, well, um, this is a position versus time graph, and it's showing that the position is increasing linearly. So this is an object traveling at a constant velocity forwards, okay? Something like that, all right? So you could be asked to do that. That might be a multiple choice type question, okay? Um, you could also be asked, okay, here's a graph with many parts. So maybe you get a position versus time graph. Okay, so this is meters and this is um, seconds here that goes like this, okay, and says calculate the overall displacement. Well, then you would use final position minus initial position. Or if it asked you to calculate the velocity over the whole trip, you would go displacement, final position minus initial position over time, okay, things like that. Just asking you to solve some, some stuff to do with that graph. You could also get... Okay, a linear graph like this, where I ask you to use y equals mx plus b, okay, which would be exactly 
like what I asked you to do on your graphing lab with the carts. Okay, I might say, here's a graph, here's the equation for the graph. Using the graphing equation and the graph, calculate how far the object would travel in 75 seconds, right? And maybe the graph only goes up to 10 seconds, right? So you'd have to use the equation to calculate that displacement, right? Everybody kind of follow there, right? So that would definitely be something I would ask you to do. Reading the questions is going to be very important because I might, I might do exactly what I just described and say, here's a graph and here's the equation for the graph. And then I would have in bold faced, italicized, underlined print, using the equation for the graph, calculate this. Right? So if I say to you specifically, do it this way, should you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What that means is there is more than one way to do it, but I'm assessing this way. Okay. So don't show me the other way. All right. Because the question specifically asks, show me this way. That's me asking, can you do it that way? Show me that you can. All right. If you show me a different way, I'm going to go, this question was not asking you that. It was asking, could you follow instructions? And the answer is no. Okay, we don't want that to be the case. Show me what you know, okay? All right, um, velocity versus time graphs, okay? Like we said, there's gonna be one of each, okay? Uh, in the written response, so again, if this is a velocity versus time graph, what's this object doing? Nope, it's accelerating, right? It's a velocity versus time graph and the velocity is getting bigger and bigger and bigger at a linear rate. Okay, so this would, be this would be showing an accelerating object. If I calculated the slope of this line, what would I be calculating? Thinking back to your need for speed lab, the acceleration, right? Because if I do this, y minus b, what I'm really doing is going final velocity minus initial velocity, because those are y values, over time, which is on the x-axis. Okay. Same thing on a position versus time graph. Final position minus initial position over time is velocity. That's the slope of this line here. Okay. Um, could I give you a velocity versus time graph where you'd have to do displacement? Yep, definitely. Okay, it wouldn't probably involve too many shapes, but it would certainly be something I might do since I asked you to do that in a lab. Okay, and I had you do it on several worksheets and several quizzes. So, yeah, I would expect that that's something I'll definitely ask you to do. Okay, so make sure you've reviewed how to do that. Okay, calculating those shapes in those areas. All right, so graphing, big. All right, then acceleration, right? We went over that, and it was mostly just problem solving, okay? Being able to use this formula manipulate it and solve for something else. Expect that you're going to have an acceleration problem in the written response. Okay, Maybe a question or two in the multiple choice about what acceleration is. Okay. From acceleration, we went into work energy theorem, right? Work is a change in energy, so that could be final minus initial energy, or it could be force times distance, okay? We did a lab on that, so expect there might be a couple multiple choice questions about the lab, but there's definitely going to be written response items about this. In fact, there are two of them that would probably indicate that one is for potential and one is for kinetic. That would be my gut instinct being the guy who made the test up. Have we done a whole bunch like that? Was the first question on the quiz one of those? Okay, so we know how to do those. Okay. Those are probably five marks each. Is that a significant portion of the test? Like next to graphing, work energy theorem is probably the next heaviest weighted thing. Okay. All right, then after that, we did conservation of energy. Okay, EI equals EF, roller coasters, sleds, stuff going down hills, okay, whatever, right? Definitely going to ask you to do one of those. Okay. 
because these two kinds of questions often give similar information, how can I tell them apart? Okay, the question may outright ask or give work. Okay, if it does, it's definitely a work energy theorem question. What if it doesn't? What other thing might a work energy theorem question give you that a conservation of energy question wouldn't? Okay, it might say there's a change in energy of this much or energy is lost. Okay, what else? Thinking of one given that you would never get. Uh, no, you'll get, well, you, I would give you mass in both. Yeah, because you would need it in a work energy theorem question, but not necessarily in the other. Okay, still thinking of one given your, you would get in a work energy theorem question, but is completely useless in an energy conservation question. It has to do with this formula. Yeah, force. Okay, have you ever had a roller coaster question or a bobsled question or a toboggan question that gave you force? No, because you don't need it. The only reason that force would be given is if energy was yeah, or changing in any way, gained or lost. Okay, we're not losing energy in a conservation of energy question, so force is irrelevant. Okay. All right, and then the thing we haven't gone over that we're going over on Monday is efficiency. Okay. And we talked a little bit about that in our lab. All right, it's the rate at which you convert your input energy into useful work. Okay, so if a machine um, uses 100 joules of energy to do 75 joules of work, how efficient is it? 75%, right. It, used, it, it only did 75 joules worth of actual work, but it used 100 joules to do it. So it runs at 75% efficiency. Okay, believe it or not, that's an incredibly efficient machine. Right. If you were looking at yesterday's lab, okay, I think you're seeing that even a cart rolling down a ramp, which was a simple energy conversion, was not very efficient. Okay, by the time it got to the bottom, it had like way less than half the energy it had at the top. Okay, so not a very efficient conversion. All right, so that'll be what we're talking about on Monday. Okay, and we calc the, they're simple calculations, but it's okay. Um, work out divided by work in. So the amount of work you put in or energy you put in, okay, you divide work, the work you did by that. You can, but I never do. I mean, it's just, if it comes out to 0.85, it's 85%, right? So yeah, you could multiply it by 100 if you want. I think it shows that on your formula sheet. I think it's always just easier to do that part in your head. Okay, so that's what's on the test. There are 20 multiple choice questions. And there are seven written response items. Two of them are graphing. Two of them are work energy theorem. You got an acceleration problem in there. Okay. You've got uh, two, graphing. two graphing, two work energy theorem, right. and one conservation of energy, one acceleration. One am I forgetting? There's one I'm forgetting. No, it's not, not efficiency. I'm forgetting what it is, but there's seven. Okay, some of them have like an A, B, and a C. Like the graphing questions have multiple subparts to them. Right? There are 45 marks in the written response, so the whole test is out of 65. Okay, which actually makes it the shortest test you've written for me. No, just one. I couldn't remember what the other one was. I, there, I'm blanking. I've got six listed there. There's one more, and I can't remember what it is now. And one conservation of energy. Okay. Um, now, I did give you that review package on Monday, okay, in Google Classroom. There's a mistake in it. Okay. On question number nine, you might just want to write this down somewhere, but question number nine in the review package, it's supposed to be 2.4 kilograms. I don't know how I hit the eight instead of the two. Those two buttons are greatly separated on the keyboard, but it's not 8.4. It's supposed to be 2.4 kilograms. And yeah, I had a bunch of people this morning asking, Mr. Coderre, I don't know how you got that answer. And the answer is I didn't get that answer. I typed it wrong. Okay. Um, so it should be 2.4 kilograms, not 8.4 kilograms. 
All right, so make sure you're taking some time over the weekend, okay, to work on this. There's no mul there's no sample multiple choice questions. They're all just old problems from old tests, um, but the answers are there, okay, so you can work through them. And then if you got questions next week, you come and see me, scheduled help Monday, scheduled help Tuesday, lunch Monday, lunch Tuesday, okay, I'm in here those days. Uh, make sure you come in and, and ask some questions if you need to, okay. Your lab report, remember, isn't due until next Friday. Right? And I did that on purpose because I didn't want it interfering with your studying for the test. Okay, so kind of put it on the back burner for now. Make your test the priority. Okay. okay. Pardon me? Yes, on Tuesday we're starting unit four. Okay, because Monday I'm going to go over efficiency and that'll be the end of that unit. We'll start climate and stuff on Tuesday. Write the test Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. So we're actually going to get lots of time for final exam review, probably three classes to do final exam review. That's where I'm looking right now, anyway. Okay. All right, any questions from this unit? Okay. Which part? Okay, I'm trying to think what you mean by the beginning, but um, like the, the graphing equation? Okay, all right, so you're only gonna get the graphing equation, y equals m times x plus b, if your graph is linear. That is, it has one line only, okay? It doesn't change direction anywhere, right? Because you can't get a, an equation for a line that's jagged because it goes all over the place, all right? So if that's the case, then this point here is what we call our y-intercept. It's b. Okay, it's a y value. So if this is a position versus time graph, b is going to be some value in meters, and it would represent our position at time zero. Okay, so in a, essentially our initial position. All right, um, y then would be any the value of any point on the line. So it could be that one. It could be this one. It could be the y value of a point that's beyond the end of the graph, right? Um, M is the slope, okay? So it's however steep the line is. And on this graph, that would represent what? What would the slope of this graph represent? Not acceleration. Okay, so if I manipulate this for slope, M is y minus b over x, and I just said that b on this graph is our initial position, right? y would be our final position. So we're saying final position minus initial position. What's on the x-axis? What does that calculate? Nope. It calculates velocity. Okay. On a velocity versus time graph, okay, so if this was a velocity versus time graph, this equation would be and it would then be calculating acceleration. Okay, if it was a velocity versus time graph, then B would be my initial velocity, Y would be my final velocity, and X is still time. Okay, so that's that's kind of the analysis you have to do when you look at a graph. Rather than memorize it, set it up and go, okay, Y is a position, B is a position, X is time. Okay, that's what I'm calculating. Okay, on a velocity versus time graph, Y is the velocity, B is a velocity, X is time. What am I calculating? Okay. Um, so yeah, if you if you got a question like this, it might say, okay, here's the graph, here's the equation. Calculate how long it would take to reach a position of 100 meters. Okay, so if it gave you a position of 100 meters, did it give you Y or X? Why? All right, so you're solving for how long it would take. That's an X value. You manipulate and solve for X. Okay, so that's the kind of thing I would ask you to do. Right? Because I would probably just take a, a graph I'd built on Google Sheets with the equation and just stick it in there and say, okay, here's the graph. You don't have to build it, but you got to calculate some stuff with it. Yeah? Um, on what kind of graph? Position or velocity? How about both? Okay. 
All right, so let's say we got a position versus time graph, okay? And my graph starts up here and then it goes like this and then it goes and then it goes up again and then it goes like this and comes down, okay? So there's my position versus time graph. It, I can't, I'm not gonna get a y equals mx plus b because it's got a bunch of different parts, right? But this is my initial position. This is my final position, okay? Can I go this minus this and get displacement? Okay, so I have to look at what's on my graph. Okay, if the question says, here's a graph, calculate displacement, I can do, I can look at my formula sheet and go, okay, what are some ways I can calculate displacement? Well, I've got a formula here that's got displacement in it, but I don't know what this is, so I probably can't use that. Okay, um, I also have this formula on there that says, I can do this. I have those things, then I should do it that way. Yeah, kind of just walk it through. If we have a velocity versus time graph, okay, let's say it looks like that, All right? So this object sit, is uh, traveling at a constant velocity, then it accelerates backwards, then it travels at a constant velocity, and then it accelerates forwards until it comes to a stop, okay? From a negative. All right, so if I wanna calculate the displacement here, I have to remember that displacement can be average velocity times time, which means, okay, the average velocity during this part is whatever this y value is, base times height, right? For this one, it's changing. So the average velocity is here, base times height over two, and so on and so on. And you just add them all up, keeping some of them negative, right? Because you got some negatives in there. Okay, so those are the kind of things that I would ask. It's exactly the same things I've asked you to do in class. Right. I'm not going to throw anything at you on this test you haven't done before or haven't seen multiple times. Okay. Everything that's on the test you've done many times already in class. Okay. What you just have to do is practice it and make sure you can still do it. All right. Any other questions there? Okay. Everybody's good there? All right. Then I want you working on the review package and see if any other questions come up. Okay, so there's a few things here that will help you with the multiple choice and a few things that are problem solving. Okay, but like I said, that was posted in the stream on Monday in Google Classroom, so you can find it there. Okay, it's just a PDF. You can download it and open it up on your phone. Okay.